Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave and today we're going to be looking at Barcelona and Real Madrid and how they set up in the Classico preview, the first of the season. I'm very, very excited. If you're excited, why not like that goddamn video and subscribe if you're new to me, Statman Dave. But anyway, let's get this party started. So first up, let's talk about the home team, Barcelona. Valverde's been there for a season and a bit now, and he's starting to get his style of football across to the Barcelona players. They set up traditionally in a 4-3-3, but that system sort of transitions to a little bit of a 4-4-2 diamond, with Lionel Messi moving from the right wing inside to number 10 to playmake. The system with the ball looks a bit like a 2-3-3. 3-2, with Messi being joined by the wing-backs to get really high in that final third, and Coutinho and Suarez playing a little bit like a two-man strike force. But Barcelona have been very, very good on the counter-attack this season. But let's go through the players that will make the lineup. First up to Stegen in goal. Arguably the best keeper in the world on form right now. His performance against Sevilla at the weekend was absolutely fantastic. Two unbelievable double saves, kept Barcelona ahead, and of course they won the game 4-2, but Stegen brilliant with his feet, an excellent shot stopper. And right now, for me, the best goalkeeper in world football. On to the back four, there's not a lot of change there. Of course, Semedo came in last season, and now is the starting right back. Very attacking, contributes in the final third, as Messi does tuck in. Semedo has to provide that width on that right-hand side. A little bit different to previous years of Barcelona with both of the fullbacks attacking really high. Jordi Alba on the other side as well receives a lot of passes from Lionel Messi at number 10 over the top. That is a classic Barcelona play. But Semedo is very good with the ball at his feet. Good at dribbling, good at taking players on. Take the first goal that Barcelona scored against Sevilla at the weekend. That started with a Semedo run past Vasquez into that attacking area. Coming inside then some lovely combination play. Messi through ball, Coutinho goal. Really good stuff. But it started with Semedo. In terms of the two centre-halves, Gerard Pique has been partnered by Longley this season. Longley signed from Sevilla. Longley's added some really good physicality to the Barcelona defence, but also is pretty decent at finding those passes into midfield. And Gerard Piquet is still keeping up the high standards of last season. Let's move into midfield for Barcelona, traditionally as a three. The interesting side here, it looks arguably like the Real Madrid midfield of last season. How they build up with the two centre-halves and the three midfielders quite deep. Arthur on the left-hand side, of course, Busquets in the middle as a defensive midfielder, arguably more of a playmaker uh, than he was when he played with Iniesta and Xavi. And of course, the other guy in midfield is Ivan Rakitic. Rakitic, you know, doing the jobs that he needs to do. A wonderful player. Scored an unbelievable volley against Sevilla at the weekend, showing that he's still got that technique and ability to hit shots within the penalty area. We already know about Busquets. We already know about Rakitic. Arthur, who is he? For me, Arthur is a bit, little bit like Tony Cruz. He likes to drop a little bit deep. He's a deep line playmaker that likes to get on the ball before shipping it. Although stylistically he's like Tony Cruz, he looks so much like Andres Iniesta. There's times when the camera pans out and you think it's Andres Iniesta back in a Barcelona kit. He's got really good close control. What I like most about Arthur is almost a complete player already. He can tackle, he can score, he can pass, he can control the tempo. He can do pretty much anything. In Barcelona's shape when they're defending, Arthur arguably joins Luis Suarez in pressing in a 4-4-2 defensive shape. He gets next to the Uruguayan striker and allows Barcelona to press high up the pitch. Arthur has it all. A wonderful player that is going to be one of the best central midfielders in world football in the coming years. Moving on to the front three for Barcelona, how they'll set up against Real Madrid. Unfortunately, Lionel Messi is out. He hyperextended his elbow against Sevilla and has got a fractured arm. Sad, sad times. Against Sevilla in the first 26 minutes, he grabbed an assist and scored a wonderful individual goal. Barcelona transitioned under Valverde to more of a counter-attacking team, believe it or not. The goal that Messi scored was on the break. Suarez won it in, on the D in midfield, played the ball out to Messi. Messi cut inside and scored. Without Messi, Dembele is probably going to come in. Was the substitute for Lionel Messi when he was removed against Sevilla. Created a number of really good opportunities for Luis Suarez and then pretty much should have had an assist when he slipped him Rakitic on the counter-attack. Again, Barcelona very, very quick to break. He'll be supplying Luis Suarez as a central striker who slightly has dropped off a little bit. His touch isn't as sort of good as it was back in the day and he's not as clinical as he was uh, at Liverpool and you know his first few seasons at Barcelona but still a very good forward arguably used a little bit like a target man these days Coutinho will be playing on the left wing again we'll add a lot of flair and creativity from that left hand side as well as cutting in and doing the classic Coutinho curled shot to the far post. But Barcelona, 4-3-3, and that is how they'll line up against Real Madrid. So let's move on to how Real Madrid will set up against Barcelona. There's some contrasting reports coming out of Spain about the current Real Madrid manager at the moment. Some news outlets say he's going to get sacked before the Clasico. Others are saying that he's going to get sacked after the Clasico and it's Lopetegui's final game as Real Madrid manager. For Real Madrid, they have been so turgid. 
Their 4-3-3 looks absolutely rubbish compared to what Zinedine Zidane had built last season and the seasons before. It's a little bit like Louis van Gaal's Manchester United. Flat in possession. Positionally, it's changed. You know, going from that shape we mentioned before, the 2-3-2-3 under Zinedine Zidane, of course, with a lot of width, with a good base for central midfield. To arguably breaking the lines and putting now two centre-halves, one defensive midfielder, four players of the two wing-backs of two central midfielders, and then a front three. What that means is Real Madrid are worse off when they're sort of retaining the ball and they're moving it around. Tony Cruz is no longer playing in that deeper position. Sometimes he's been left on the bench like Levante this weekend. What that means for Real Madrid is they don't have as much stability in the central area. And counter-attacks have been a massive problem for them this season. So let's move on to the Real Madrid team. First up in goal is Courtois, of course, signed from Chelsea. He's kicked Keylor Navas out of the team and cemented his position within the sticks. Let's move on to the back four, of course. They've got a bit of a problem at right back, with Danny Carvajal having an injury-plagued season so far. Orozola was signed by Real Sociedad, who's played a number of minutes there, but also Luis Cus Vasquez has played there, given the second half against Levante, Vasquez was moved there, and Gareth Bale was introduced on the right-hand side to add a bit more attack. In the Clasico, I think Vasquez will start. I think we will revert to that team that he played in the second half that were a lot better than the first half against Levante. To fill in the rest of the back 4-4 four, four Real Madrid, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Rafa Varane partnering Sergio Ramos at the back. Rafa Varane had his worst performance in his career against Levante. Both of the goals that Real Madrid conceded were Rafa Varane's fault. A handball, but also misjudging a long ball. Simple defending that he didn't do. Strange, his consistency has been so good in recent years, but that game had an absolute stinker. On to left back, we've got the best left back in world football by a country battle that is the playmaking sensation that is Marcelo. Marcelo has still been brilliant under Lopatelli getting forward providing the width popping one twos creating things for fun but arguably he doesn't have his pal Cristiano Ronaldo to put the chances away so he hasn't got as many assists as he should have. Into midfield it's been rather interesting for Lopetegui's Real Madrid. He hasn't found the right balance he started off playing Tony Cruz as a deep line playmaker, trying to get him on the ball in between the lines as a number six with uh, Isco and Luka Modric. It lacked uh, someone to destroy, lacked someone to break up the play. He's then brought in Casemiro and playing Modric next to Isco as a central midfielder. I'm a really big fan of Isco when he's used either as a 10 in a 4-4-2 diamond or on the left wing. But in central midfield, I feel like he's not quick enough on the ball and slows things down, takes too many touches. What I'd like to see for Real Madrid is to put him higher up the pitch again, maybe on the left wing with Gareth Bale on the right wing and Benzema through the middle. Without Tony Cruz in central midfield, they've lacked a controller, but also it's to do with the shape of the midfield that's really letting Real Madrid down. Not only can they can't open teams up anymore as well as they did last season, but they're really having a problem dealing with counter-attacks. But we've got to talk about the elephant in the room. That is, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo's move to Juventus. If you look at how Real Madrid still play, it's almost like Ronaldo is on the pitch. The chances that they create from crosses into the box, or alternatively, if Marcelo, for example, has popped a little one-two, then you look for the cutbacks. There's nobody there that's putting the ball on the back of the net. It's almost like players like Mariano that have been brought in have been cursed by the Cristiano Ronaldo number seven jersey. He was very, very poor against Levante, was offside for two goals. Arguably could have been on the score sheet twice, but didn't have the same movement and guile and ability to just wait like Cristiano Ronaldo. Everything has been geared to create for the Portuguese legend in the previous three seasons. Now he's not there, Real Madrid are really lacking someone to take the sort of games by the scruff of the neck. It should be Gareth Bale, it should be someone like Asensio, but lacking Ronaldo's goal-scoring ability in that penalty area has been a big, big problem for Lopetegui's Real Madrid. So guys, that is how Barcelona and Real Madrid will set up in the Clasico. This game is going to be won and lost on the break. Barcelona's counter-attack was fantastic and severe, arguably using Luis Suarez as a direct target man, then him allowing to bring the other players in. Of course, the Messi goal, uh, you know, we spoke about before, cutting in from that right-hand side, was a direct play where Suarez won it, instantly played. Or alternative, later on, there was some good play between Suarez, Arthur, Dembele for the Rakitic's chance. Very, very direct. How Real played against Levante, they were so open to the break. So this game is going to be won on Barcelona, counter-attacking, being disciplined and then breaking with their front three, Coutinho, Dembele and Suarez. If you want to look at from a Real Madrid perspective how they might win this game, they've got to focus on pressing Dembele. Dembele lost the ball a number of times with his back to goal uh, in his own half. Sevilla transitioned and then created some good opportunities. The second goal they scored was from that play, pressing really high on his back, then using the space behind the right fullback to attack and scoring a great goal. Again, that's the space. For all the good work Semedo has done going forward, he lacked a bit of tactical nous and willingness to get back when Barcelona have lost possession, arguably creating a big area where Real Madrid could attack 
back through Asensio. And that's where the game could be won or lost in that right back area for Barcelona. If Real Madrid can exploit that space in behind, even Benzema moving into that zone and Asensio or Bale making that inside run to become the nominal striker, that's where Barcelona could get caught. But it's going to be Barca's counter versus Real Madrid's positional play and also in the transition. Lots of big stuff there. But I'm going to go for a Barcelona 3 0 win. Get into the comments below. What is the score going to be in this massive game in La Liga? Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you're new. Like that goddamn video. See you guys later. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out three things we learned this weekend when we went into Barcelona and Real Madrid? Or alternatively, if Barcelona need to replace Luis Suarez, why not check out this video on what is a false nine, Roberto Firmino's role in Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool explained because he's been linked with the new Camp for a few months.